I don't think it matters whether or not Matt Hancock's pledge to test 100,000 people a day is reached. I, I don't think he has that necessarily within his control. I think it was... I'm, Please, please let him pull it off or, or, or let the NHS pull it off. But if it doesn't happen, I, I can see people already casting that pledge as a sort of political suicide note. I, I can imagine people already arguing that if, if you know, I mean, and, and where's the number? If it's 999,000, is he all right on that? I've got that number slightly wrong, haven't I? If it's 99,999, there you go, pretty Patel, it's not that hard. If it's 99,999, does he have to walk the plank in a way that if it was one test more, his, his job would be safe? Or, or is it 900,000 and he has to walk the plank? Is his reputation in tatters if they do 800 and... Uh, 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 80,000 tests. I should have written these numbers down instead of trying to do them all from memory. But you follow my logic, right? The target is 100,000. The knives are being sharpened for Hancock, I feel. This is an entirely speculative opinion. But someone's going to have to carry the can for this catastrophe, even as they continue pr to pretend that it hasn't been in many ways catastrophic. Hancock is the most obvious victim. Boris Johnson's reputation for loyalty and honesty is, of course, not something that will provide the Secretary of State for health with much comfort at this time, but with this caveat that I honestly don't know now whether or not I'm just hoping in a, in a kind of patriotic sense that he pulls it off or whether or not I, I've, I've kind of taken temporary leave of my senses, but hand on heart, looking you straight in the eye this morning, I don't think it matters. If, if the capacity is there, and I know what you're thinking, and I know that you're also thinking that this is what I should be thinking and probably what I would have been thinking at points previous. You're thinking, how do we know whether the capacity is there or not if they haven't actually done the tests? Are you seriously asking me to take this shower's word for it? I, I get that, all right? We'll put that in brackets. But if the capacity is there, I'm not sure we can blame Matt Hancock honestly and with integrity, if they're not all taken up. I, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. M maybe you can explain to me why, if the capacity is there and they're not all done, if, if, if there is the capacity for 100,000 tests a day, but we don't actually find ourselves conducting 100,000 tests a day by um, this time next week, 30 days after September, April, June, and November. So by, by Sunday and Monday of next week, I, I don't feel that that would be curtains for Matt Hancock. I don't even feel that it would be his fault. And, you know, we've had some complicated conversations this week. We've had some harrowing conversations this week. We've had some profoundly important conversations this week, as, as we do most weeks, actually, but the stakes have rarely felt as high as they do at the moment. So I make no apology for going in with, a, with, a, with, a, with quite a nice and straightforward question. If the capacity is there, but the testing isn't done... <sighs> Do you feel that Matt Hancock will have failed on a serious scale? I don't. And that, that may surprise you, but, but it shouldn't. Because if, if you approach these matters in a non-partisan way, if you simply want what's best for the country, then you can give the mother of all coatings to one member of the cabinet while giving a round of applause to another. That's called being honest. It's called being open-minded. I'm very sorry, but I have to actually disagree with James here. This is a very naive approach. So let's start off with a few things here. Why did Matt Hancock give that number? Why didn't he say something like, we're going to test as many people as possible, um, for example, 10% of the population. But when giving this number of 100,000 tests a day, it means nothing to the public. The public don't understand that 100,000 tests a day is not 100,000 people tested a day because some individuals may need to be tested more than once. So this number of 100,000 tests a day, while it sounds amazing, it doesn't actually mean 100,000 people being tested. And as I've said before, limiting the testing just to NHS staff or certain individuals will ignore, of course, the general public. And the general public need to be tested. Now, another thing I want to talk about is how Matt Hancock, as the health secretary, and who has to take responsibility for this, has ignored this problem 
since the beginning of the year. So in China, we had the outbreak in January. It was ignored. In February, it was ignored. When it started in Italy and exploded in March, it was ignored. Regarding PPEs, Matt Hancock said there were sufficient supplies. There was nothing to worry about. They had enough supplies for the entire NHS. Then it turned out it was not the case. So was he lying or did he not know? And also regarding the PPEs, they relied on supply chains, which were completely useless during this crisis, instead of stockpiles. Now, this was a mistake. I don't know if Matt Hancock is responsible for this mistake, but he has to take responsibility for it at the end of the day because he is the health secretary. Now, the lack of PPE meant that doctors and nurses put themselves at risk. They also put their patients at risk. And then we had to rely on media interviews with doctors and nurses who were begging for PPE. And the response from the government was either, don't worry, there is no shortage of PPE, while at the same time they were sending internal memos to NHS staff advising them to reuse PPE, which is against regulations. And what about the lockdown? At the beginning, the, the lockdown was not enforced by the government. That meant that people could go to Cheltenham, they could go to the pub, and it took a number of days before the government decided, OK, we need to enforce this. This was valuable time lost in the fight against this spread. And you can't have that time back. And then you also have the vagueness around which companies are essential, which business and work is essential. So you have people who are forced to go to work because their owners have decided that their business is essential. This meant that many people were using public transport, spreading the virus, when they should have been self-isolating or at least at home. I'm sorry, James, but you can't let Matt Hancock off the hook here simply because he's the lesser of the two evils when we put him up against Boris Johnson. So I just want to say something about capacity. It's something that James brought up in the monologue. Now, the government has said that there is capacity, but it hasn't been taken up. <laughs> How is that possible? If there are thousands, hundreds of thousands of people asking for a test, then how can you have spare capacity? How can people be not taking up the tests? The, the only possible reason for people not taking up tests is because there is no capacity or there is fake capacity. And the fact that the website for testing went down after a number of hours proves that either there is no capacity or the capacity that they presented is fake. So this entire monologue based on Matt Hancock is doing the best he can falls flat on its face because Matt Hancock has not done the best he can and he's not doing the best he can at the moment. Let me know in the comments, guys, if you agree or disagree with me. I know some of you are fans of James O'Brien, but here I think he's completely wrong. He's hopeful that Matt Hancock is doing the right thing. But I think reality is telling us a different story. Thanks.